shit, you spray me too, but luckily it didn't get in my eyes, just on my eyebrow. I hope they, I hope they on, stomp his ass. I hope they stomp his ass. Smith is calling for other cars because him and Martin are chasing him. Yeah, you spray me too, but luckily it didn't get in my eyes, just on my eyebrow. I hope they stomp his ass. I hope they stomp his ass. Smith is calling for other cars because him and Martin are chasing him. more breaking as a sixth Memphis police officer is under investigation in connection to the beating death of Tyree Nichols. Memphis police confirming to Fox 13 Preston Hemphill has been relieved of duty pending an investigation. Now that does not mean that he has been fired. It means he has been placed on leave. We can also confirm that he is the officer seen on police body camera video tasing Tyree Nichols. This midday, we have not been told, however, if he will face charges. So listen, right now, five former Memphis police officers, as you know, are facing second degree murder charges in connection to Nichols' death. This is a story that continues to develop, and we will have more information for you either in this newscast on our website, fox13memphis.com, or again on our breaking news app. It's unbelievable that all the grocery prices are so low. Scorpion unit was put together to add extra visibility in the community and also develop relationships with community members. The acronym stands for Street Crimes Operations to Restore Peace in Our Neighborhoods. And it basically was that people felt like the police department was allowing gun violence in certain communities. And it wasn't that, it was just that police officers that are responding to calls for service had such high volumes of calls. The whole idea that the Scorpion unit is a bad unit, uh, I just have a, a problem with that. I'm sure she would say that because she put them together. Um, most of these urban cities got them. Here, where we at, we got the Jump Out Boys, the Punishers. All these police departments have a rogue unit. And they know it. And it's all across these united. That's the one thing we united in, violence. Very much united in that. But here's what I want to say. I'm not going to let CJ off the hook. I'm going to start with her. Because, see, shit trickles downstream. Okay? And a lot of y'all probably saying, well, why you all heard the add the sister? Why you all? I'm going to tell you just why. Okay? Because she's got a history that is very, very, very uh, checkered. And I don't know if I personally would have even wanted her for my police chief. I, I really don't. Okay. So, she, you know how they switch each other around once they mess up in some other city or county or they go to another one. And they, and that same, that's the same for black officers as well as white officers. So, Memphis Police Chief Sherilyn Davis was, of course, fired from previous Atlanta job after a botched sex crimes probe. So I did a little bit more research into her. So I want to find out more about this C.J. Davis, who everybody is saying, oh, she did it. And I even heard Crump say she did a magnificent job. Yes, she did of um, charging the officers right away. But you got to remember, this is her group. How many complaints had she gotten about the jump out boys that she didn't even investigate? 
that they didn't care. She didn't care because, remember, this is her baby. This unit. She knows that. That's no supervision. She knew it. Because they're rogue. They get out to go out there in the streets and do whatever the hell they want to. Jump out on you, drag you out the car. <laughs> the chief police of in Memphis in charge of the five officers who fatally beat and tasered most motorist Tyree Nichols was fired from a previous law enforcement job after a botched probe. Now, I want y'all to listen to this. Cheryl and C.J. Davis became the first female police chief in Memphis history in 2021 and is currently in the international spotlight after five of her police officers beat Tyree Nichols to death. She was fired from the Atlanta Police Department in 2008 for her alleged involvement in a sex crimes investigation into the husband of an Atlanta police sergeant, according to the Atlantic, I mean the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Two detectives accused Davis of telling them not to investigate Terrell Marion Crane, who was married to Sergeant Tanya. Crane after the police department obtained photos of him with underage girls. Did y'all hear that? She want to cover up her fellow officer's husband who the department had obtained photos of him with underage girls. So now if you're a parent of a daughter, you should have some concerns. She says she's a parent. A federal grand jury later indicted Terrell Cain on child pornography. He pleaded guilty to one count of child pornography in 2009, the newspaper reported. She wanted this covered up. The indictment was issued after Atlanta police took no action in the case and a subsequent investigation by the city appointed to Davis as the reason. That's why there was no subsequent investigation. Davis was then demoted from major to lieutenant before being fired from the force that she had joined in 2008. Y'all hear that? So she was willing to let a person walk that was into child pornography. No telling if he molested any children or any girls. But she was fine with that. So I am looking at her sideways because... While everybody is giving her a lot of praise, I always am been taught crap trinkles downhill. So we starting at the top here. Okay? When I opened up this program, I opened it up with the white officer saying that he hopes that they stomp the shit out of his ass. However language he used, he hopes they stomp his ass. That officer was white. Officer Preston Hempel. She ain't fire him. He ain't get fired. But I noticed that when I saw the first initial video, I saw some white hands tasering this guy. Talking crap too. Tasering. Talking shit. This was Officer Preston Hempel. See, we're going to show you, and black people, if y'all got to have the phenomenon now, George Floyd was all the way to catalyst. We got to have the catalyst now and the wherewithal, and we got to have the wheel. Uh, like Marcus Garvey said, 
Wake up, you sleeping giant. You can accomplish what you will. What do you will to accomplish? And we got to stay on this corruption. Whether it's black or white. or Because what's, what's happening is you got to understand that policing is a culture. Come up out of the slave catcher. Come up out of the, you got your papers? Where's your slave pass? This is where the institution of policing came out of. There's a few officers that got mad at me when I spoke this, including one being my brother, until I had to show him the actual paperwork. He's still mad about it because he didn't know or was something that he never took the analogy of. It's like, dude, what do you, I mean, what do you think the origins of police is? Slave catching. So it doesn't matter if you have um, black slave catcher. Look what they did. I mean, every person, when they went into Emmett Till's house, it was black guys that took them to, the, to, to where Emmett Till lived. It was black guys that did that and said that he got to come out. Them white men didn't go up in there without black help. So don't think because you see five black officers, it won't be no race involved. Because it's not the color of the perpetrator. It's the color of the victims. It's the victims. So if you uphold that institution... You already know your target is black. Black. Black bodies. Black and brown bodies. That's who your target is. One of the officers, one officer, um, sergeant, who I respect dearly, is retired. Um, and that is uh, Sergeant Dorsey. Um. Because she tells it like it is. She don't uh, pull punches. And uh, she's very knowledgeable at what she does. And she comes with the truth hard. Uh, I was impressed to hear her, I guess, description or her um, analysis her uh, of uh, 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 C.J. Davis, and so I I I really respect her opinion. So when I saw her on CNN, well, let me just share what she said with you. Retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey joins us now. Uh, you have actually called for the police chief to resign. You said she should go. I'm assuming then you disagree with Benjamin Crump's praise there. T tell us why in your view here. Well, listen, if you've never been a part of that system and you don't understand the nuances, then you would say what uh, Mr. Crump said. And so what she did was a baby step. She did what she had to do. She's in damage control. She understands that she's an at-will employee serving at the pleasure of a mayor. We've heard that many community members have complained about that Scorpion unit, and yet nothing was done. The fish rots from the head. She is solely and totally responsible. And while she fired five officers quickly, there were many more than five standing around. That Scorpion unit is alleged to have 40 officers, and I'm sure there were some officers from her patrol unit who also were present. So disbanding the unit, uh, getting rid of those five, and allowing the others to stay on the on the department and who are probably working and pulling folks over to today is not um, sufficient enough for me. But do you agree that the swift action that we have seen from the chief is a potential blueprint for these cases, these types of cases moving forward? Well, she certainly shows that uh, an administrative investigation can be adjudicated quickly on the LAPD. My chief has 365 days, and maybe that's what it is nationwide, but it doesn't take 365 days to investigate an administrative hearing. And so she's shown that. 
And so no longer can uh, a police chief pretend that they need weeks and months to finish an investigation and find out whether or not wrongdoing occurred. Right, and oftentimes they know it's occurred. I mean, they use the investigation as cover to not have to say anything. They can just say, oh, it's under investigation. We don't have to say anything. Well, now we know how quickly it can happen. So on the disbanding of the Scorpion unit, what is the intended purpose of these sorts of specialty police units? The district attorney there in Memphis says uh, they tend to breed a culture of aggressiveness. As a retired sergeant, is that your view? Well, I think these specialized units certainly have a place, but it's imperative that you have supervisors. I think we're happy. Yeah, we're losing, unfortunately, we're losing uh, Sergeant Dorsey there. I was really looking forward to hearing her perspective, but we'll try to bring her back once we sort out those audio issues. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's see what sh I agree 110% with what Cheryl Dorsey said. I agree a thousand percent, actually, with what she said, because she's keeping it a hundred. If this don't show y'all that we need uh, to do away with qualified immunity and bring in back uh, to the George Floyd uh, and police, what is it, Quality and Policing Act? If nobody don't think it's necessary to get that back out front, then nobody's going to understand unless they start feeling the same pain that black mothers are feeling. Un, un, you know, and that is the only way because we can't keep going on like this where your white counterparts go, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so... But no, you haven't walked a mile in my shoe. You can walk, but you really going to understand if you become us and we get a reprieve and we can live vicariously through your pain. That's the only way I think things are going to change. Huh. I want to play lastly this last thing that Cheryl Dorsey said. Okay, we're going to continue with this. The Shelby County, Tennessee Sheriff, after seeing it for the first time when the rest of us did, placed two of his deputies who were on the scene on leave pending an investigation of their conduct. Let's talk more about what we witnessed tonight on the video with CNN legal analyst Elliot Williams former federal prosecutor, CNN political commentator Van Jones, and retired Los Angeles Police Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. I'm glad to have you all here this evening. I mean, just the, the range and the scope of the vantage points that we have seen tonight, very telling. I want to begin with you here, um, Sergeant Dorsey, on this point, because the video from the mounted police camera, for example, very disturbing to think about what we were watching and witnessing in real time. It, it does show police hitting Tyree Nichols at least nine times, kicking and hitting. I want to make sure when you're watching this, everybody, it is very disturbing what you're seeing. It is graphic content, so please take caution in terms of what you are seeing and looking at. They were hitting him with a baton and an asp. What are we witnessing here? Walk me through this a little bit, Sergeant Dorsey, in terms of what you are seeing. Uh, we're seeing uh, officers abuse uh, their authority. We're seeing them punish. Mr. Uh, Nichols, we're seeing these officers do what they do on a regular basis. I promise you we'll find out in the future that there are going to be others that are going to come forward and talk about the kind of abuses they've suffered at the hands of the Scorpion unit. I mean, the name alone is off-putting. These officers understand that great deference is given to their version of events, and we heard them from start to finish manufacturing probable cause, lying about the encounter. Uh, creating an audio record because they understood that they were being recorded when they said, you know, he was really strong, all 140 pounds of him, when they said that he was trying to take their gun, when they lied and said that he had tried to hit them in the midst of committing an infraction, reckless driving, and then to know that his mom said that 
Officers came to her home and said that her son was being uh, treated at the hospital because he was a DUI and they were going to take him to the jail and book him, knowing he wasn't able to be booked because of his injuries. And it wasn't until the hospital staff called and said, do you know your son is here and why aren't you here? So they knew exactly what they were doing from start to finish. They were intellectually dishonest. And I think this police chief has got a lot of work to do in terms of those officers and those who stood by and acquiesced this murder. Sergeant Dorsey, I have a signal to traffic well by what we discussed Woo. on camera. Knowing they had body cameras, you heard them begin to say statements that are akin to a script. Van, I want to bring you into this. Because they begin to <laughs> oh, concoct stories. Y'all heard him. Oh, he was so strong. Boy, he was, I couldn't believe it. I said, okay. So this is how it goes, y'all. This is modern policing in America. And so we really don't want to hear it no more. We just want it stopped. We just want it stopped. I don't want to hear it. Let me hear what else uh, Dorsey said about this. Following the release of the police video showing the arrest and fatal beating of 29-year-old Tyree Nichols, Memphis District Attorney Stephen Mulroy has issued a statement promising that his office will do everything it can to get justice for Tyree and his family. Let's talk about what that looks like. With us now is former U.S. Attorney Michael Moore and former Los Angeles Police Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Thank you both for being with us this morning. Uh, Michael, first, I, I want to start with you. Uh, because there are a lot of questions about what prompted the reaction that we saw from the officers in the video. Uh, it, it doesn't appear that they had cause to attack him the way they did after the stop. What did you think? Well, I'm glad to be with all of you. I'm sorry it's on a day like this. Um, let me say, I think that we can talk about training and that type of thing and about ticks and crime. That has nothing to do with what I saw on the tape. And, that was just sort of a, a not a lack of training, but a lack of, of conscience uh, on these officers. So I want to separate that out a little bit. Um, you know, I, I do think that we have a situation where we have a lot of good people in law enforcement and we have some folks who are not good. And we saw that on the tape. Um, one thing that I may want to consider and, and I would urge people to think about is the use of these task forces and what it means and how are they monitor and how are they supervised on a day to day basis. Are people in them for too long? Uh, so that they start to lose their sense of, of community policing and of the job that they are, were hired to do. And that is to protect and to serve a particular community, not to act like an elite uh, uh, military team uh, in, in the area. So that to me is one place we, we, we can start. I, I hope we'll have discussions going forward about outrage, you know, in, in, from community leaders, not just when we see uh, an excessive use of force, but also when we see a spike in crime. At the same time, I want to see the people who are concerned about a spike in crime upset when we have an excessive use of force and those discussions that need to happen. And I think that's how we have real discussions about moving forward and making progress. I don't think we can equate, though, the, the, the brutality on that tape um, with, with, with all police departments. Um, that, that's something that those officers, um, you know, let, let the criminal justice system uh, take its course uh, in that case. Okay. You know, there have been calls uh, for the police union, the Memphis Police Association, to take a strong, stronger stand to issue uh, a statement regarding these indictments and, and of course, the, the firings of these officers. And Cheryl, to you, we just got a statement from the Memphis Police Association. I do want to read it in full before I get your response. It says, the Memphis Police Association would again like to extend condolences to the family of Mr. Tyree Nichols. The Memphis Police Association is committed to the administration of justice and never condones the mistreatment of any citizen nor any abuse of power that those all sound bites y'all those all sound bites i don't even want to hear this mr nichols family the city of memphis and the same pr nothing less we pray for justice healing same pr non-violence peaceful protest what did cheryl say Cheryl? Understand that the these unions are, are there to protect the officers, and so they are 
uh, in some instances, a lobbying arm of these police departments in terms of rights of officers. And so uh, they gave a very politically correct and, and wanting to seem sensitive statement. But understand this, that police department and that city has a real problem. Now that we've had over 24 hours almost, um, coming up on 24 hours since that video has been released, I have so many questions about what that department did really um, to prevent this. All of this was preventable. You have officers who are young on the job, unsupervised out there, doing what they do on a regular basis. This was not anything that uh, they aren't accustomed to doing. And we know that they were very sophisticated and savvy in that they created an audio record to try to manufacture probable cause for the initial stop and everything that happened after. Mm -hmm. well, Troy, we saw it. Especially, as you noted, when they're discussing the incident after it happened, I find that very interesting. And notably, the, the police chief here in Memphis said that race is less of an issue in this incident than bias is. But another factor might be groupthink. Uh, in your experience working in police departments, is groupthink a major issue within the force when, when someone witnesses someone else escalating and then they escalate? Do you get the sense that that contributed to what we saw? It's absolutely a contributing factor, and I don't take race out of the issue, by the way. Uh, I refer to it as a wolf pack mentality. We see this all the time at the end of a foot pursuit where officers are putting in work because that's what they do. They punish you when they catch you at the end of a foot pursuit. And so we see officers who are coming on the scene uh, after the fact, and they want to get in, get in a punch, get in a kick. Somebody comes up late and pulls out an ass and starts beating Mr. Nichols with that, and so it's absolutely group thing not unique to the scorpion unit uh bothered by the name um a scorpion but not unique to the unit that's police culture that's what they do it's important particularly in a small unit like that where camaraderie is a big thing and officers want to know can i trust you are you gonna back me and so these officers have demonstrated time and time again and on that event on that incident that you can trust me i'm gonna buy into and um, corroborate the lie that we're all going to get together and tell about what happened here tonight. And, and Michael T, I just want, I'm just curious to know your... Th Whoa! Whoa! And we're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to sugarcoat it. I don't want to hear because she's a, a Memphis first black police chief. Uh-uh. Did it let... Some some these some of these officers was as young as twenty four, and they out there jumping out on people. <sighs> well, I wanted to get that off, and my condolences go out again to Tyree's family and friends and everybody in Memphis. Nobody should have to um, endure that. And every black person, as a country, we're traumatized. Because you just don't have to be the, the people who are the victims of the abuse to be affected. Even the perpetrators, families. And I think Tyree's mother so elegantly put it. You know, I feel sorry for his family because they got to endure this craziness. They got to walk out and somebody know that that was their brother or their uncle or their uh, um, son that did that to Tyree. So they got to run around with the stigma of being related to you. And it's really a mess. But I think, again... That chief needs to be examined, and uh, because I I don't I want to know how many of the complaints that she actually investigated that was done with this Scorpion unit. Yeah, she dismantled it, but if it was like forty or fifty of a member, what she do with the rest of them? There's only five of them that I see fired. Where the rest of them at? Yeah, 
Okay. All right, y'all. I want to know your comments. Leave them below, please. Share the video. And if y'all want me to go live about this, I will. But let me just hear what y'all have to say. Thanks for being out there. And if you like what you hear, like, subscribe again, and share my channel. And I'll see you in the next video.